Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave. In this 50th episode of Gunpla News, we'll be looking at some of the newly released promo images of Bondi's 2017 Gunpla lineup. It's shaping up to be a great year so far, with twice as many Master Grade kits already announced than what we got in the entirety of 2016. This year's Master Grade lineup will be kicked off with the GM Sniper 2, and we've got some more action shots of this 0080 mobile suit to drool over. This GM now appears to have a bipod mounted underneath its signature sniper rifle, a detail not present on the HGUC model. This bipod can assist in on-the-ground poses as seen here, and is generally a really neat addition to the design. As seen on the original convention prototype, the shield is capable of standing up on its own, and this new image shows off that function from the rear for a better look at the mechanism that makes it work. Ground poses aren't all the sniper will be good for, however, as these new images show just how awesome this mobile suit looks on an action base. This truly is an impressive model for such an obscure mobile suit, but unfortunately the wonky proportions keep it from being one of my favorites. March's Providence Gundam is still keeping its functionality a closely guarded secret, as the most recent set of images of this Gundam merely show it standing in an unassuming neutral pose. Joining the Providence in March is a surprise release in the form of the RX-7802 Gundam The Origin version. No, this is not a reprint of the 2015 model that got mistaken for a new release. This is, in fact, an expanded release of the original model with some nice little bonuses added into the box. Notice that the V-fin and chest Vulcan cover are now yellow, and not one but two LED units are included with the kit. The first unit is in the classic yellow, and in a surprising twist, the second unit is purple. As bizarre as that may be, it is a very welcome addition as for the first time ever, Bondi's official yellow and purple LED units will be available outside of the premium Bondi web shop. Of course, paying almost 6,000 yen just for those two LEDs is a bit silly, but for people like me that skipped out over the first release of this Gundam, it is a very tempting bundle. Before I move down the scale chart to the high grades, I do want to take a moment to draw some attention to a recently released P-Bondi model, the Master Grade New Gundam Verka with Heavy Weapon System. As can be seen in these in-hand images, the completed model is extremely plain as a result of the subpar color separation present on the new armor. It's not entirely surprising for a P-Bondi model to possess simplified tooling for newly molded parts, but it is worth noting that this kit in particular will require at the very least some panel lining to make it look decent. Now, on to the high grades. The Roe has a pair of new official images in both a neutral pose and in a dynamic pose with the mace. Some of you may recognize these photos from my top 10 2017 gunplay list I released a few days ago, and those of you are correct. These are my clearest images of the Roe we've seen so far, and it's great to finally see this kit in all its glory after waiting so long for it to be announced. In other IBO news, the Helmwidge Reinkar has a new trick to show off. As seen here, the Helmwidge's massive staff weapon can split apart into a sword and a mace for dual wielding purposes. The Helmwidge also appears to retain its expanding foot gimmick from the anime, as evidenced by these alternate foot parts seen in the accessory loadout. The yellow plastic on the model also now appears to be a slightly less unattractive color, although I'm still personally not sold on it. There's one new image of the Luna Gazer Gundam I want to show you guys tonight, and while it is just another picture of the model in its powered up form, it does show off a pair of red stickers on the arms that were not noticeable before, but do improve the color palette of the model. They weren't as visible in the earlier images, if they were present at all, and they do add a nice little splash of color into the otherwise somewhat drab looking model. Unfortunately, they don't do enough to change my opinion of the kit. Before we wrap things up, there's one final set of images to mention, and they're of the Hekesia. The Hekesia can be seen here with its rather brutal looking hook knife in hand, and oddly enough, the two remaining images show Hekesia holding the extra weapons included in option set 2 that were for use with the Hyakuri and Hyakuren. This is an unusual sight, as Bondi generally does not advertise newer models interacting with older option parts. Perhaps these weapons shall make a return in season 2? We'll have to wait and see. Speaking of option parts, I have a couple corrections to make regarding the new option set I talked about last episode. The set containing the parts for the Landman Rody, Scharfrichter Gay Rail, and Gray's Ground Type is option set 9, not set 8. And as many of you were very quick to point out, we still don't have a model of the Spinner Rody, so IBO Season 1 does not have that 100% model completion rate quite yet. But that's all the news for tonight, so leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it around with your friends. 
If you're new here, please do click the subscribe button either in or below the video, and feel free to explore some of my other content by clicking through the thumbnails on the screen. I'm Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time.